Have you ever looked at a map and wondered why airplanes don't fly in straight lines? It seems like the most logical way to get from one place to another, right? Just draw a straight line and follow it. But when you look at flight paths on a map, they often appear as strange, squiggly lines that seem to wander around instead of taking the shortest route. This might seem confusing at first, but there are good reasons for these unusual paths. The truth is, airplanes do fly the shortest route possible. However, the Earth is not flat like a map. It's a giant sphere, and this changes everything about how we navigate. On a flat map, flight paths often appear as strange squiggly lines. They seem to wander around instead of taking the shortest route. But if you think about the Earth as a three-dimensional object, it starts to make more sense. The shortest distance between two points on a sphere is not a straight line, but a curve. This curve is known as a great circle route. Imagine wrapping a string tightly around a globe, that's the most efficient way to travel between those points, and that's how airplanes try to fly. Pilots and navigators use these great circle routes to plan the most efficient paths for their flights. This helps save time, fuel, and ultimately money, but there's more to it than just geometry. Air traffic control, weather patterns, and geopolitical considerations also play a role in determining flight paths. For example, avoiding storms or restricted airspace can cause deviations from the ideal great circle route. So, while it might look like airplanes are taking a longer, more complicated route, they're actually following the most efficient path available given all the factors at play. Next time you look at a flight map and see those squiggly lines, remember that they represent the best possible route for that journey. It's a fascinating blend of geography, technology, and strategy. Understanding this can give you a new appreciation for the complexity and precision involved in modern air travel. It's not just about getting from point A to point B, but doing so in the safest, most efficient way possible. So the next time you board a plane, take a moment to think about the incredible journey you're about to embark on and the intricate planning that makes it all possible. And remember, those squiggly lines on the map are the key to unlocking the mystery of efficient air travel. Because the Earth is a sphere, the shortest path between two points is a curve called a great circle route. A great circle is any circle that cuts the Earth into two equal halves. The equator is a great circle, but there are many others. When you see a curved flight path on a flat map, it's actually following a great circle route. The map distorts the reality of distances and makes the path look longer than it really is. Airlines use great circle routes to save time and fuel. By flying the shortest distance they can reduce flight times and operate more efficiently. This is better for the environment and keeps ticket prices lower. Another major factor influencing flight paths is the wind. High above the earth, powerful winds called jet streams flow in specific patterns. These winds can reach speeds of over 200 miles per hour. Pilots can take advantage of jet streams by flying in the same direction as the wind, this is called riding the tailwind. Tailwinds give airplanes a boost, increasing their speed and reducing travel time. On the other hand, flying into a headwind can significantly slow down an airplane and increase fuel consumption. Pilots try to avoid headwinds whenever possible to save time and fuel. They may adjust their altitude or route to find more favorable wind conditions. Just like on land, there are rules and borders in the air. Airplanes cannot simply fly wherever they want. They must follow specific routes and stay within designated airspaces. These airspace restrictions are in place for safety and security reasons. They help to prevent collisions between aircraft and ensure that planes are flying in controlled environments. Factors like military operations, political tensions, or even special events can lead to airspace closures or restrictions. For example, flights between certain countries might have to take longer routes due to political disagreements or conflicts. These factors can make seemingly short flights much longer and more complex. Section 5. Staying safe up high. Safety is always the top priority in aviation. When planning flight paths, airlines and pilots carefully consider potential emergencies. They want to ensure that there are safe places to land in case of an unexpected event. For long flights over water this means choosing routes that stay within a reasonable distance from airports. If an engine fails or another problem occurs, the plane needs to be able to divert to a safe landing location as quickly as possible. Airlines and regulators have strict rules about how far a twin-engine plane can fly from an airport. These rules are called ETOPS, which stands for Extended Range Twin-Engine Operational Performance Standards. 
Section 6, A Tale of Two Cities. In this section we will explore the fascinating dynamics of air travel between two major cities, New York and London. These two cities are not only cultural and financial hubs, but also serve as key points in the global air travel network. Let's look at an example to understand the intricacies involved in planning a flight route between these two bustling metropolises. A flight from New York City to London might seem like it should fly in a straight line across the Atlantic Ocean. This is the most intuitive route one might imagine when thinking about the shortest distance between two points. However, if you look at a map of actual flight paths, you'll see that the route curves northward over Canada and Greenland. This might seem counterintuitive at first glance, but there's a very good reason for this apparent detour. This is because the Great Circle route between New York and London passes over those areas. The Great Circle route is the shortest path between two points on the surface of a sphere, which in this case is our planet Earth. While it might seem longer on a flat map, it's actually the shortest distance. This is a fundamental concept in navigation and is crucial for optimizing flight efficiency and fuel consumption. Additionally, this route offers more options for emergency landings in case of a problem. Airports in Canada and Greenland provide critical safety nets for flights that might encounter technical issues or medical emergencies. Flying over land provides more opportunities to divert to an airport if needed, compared to flying over the vast and remote North Atlantic. This is a significant consideration for flight planning ensuring passenger safety and operational reliability. This is especially important for twin-engine airplanes, which have fewer engine options in case of an emergency. Regulations often require these aircraft to stay within a certain distance of an airport, making the northern route more practical. Air traffic control and flight planning teams work meticulously to ensure that every flight is as safe and efficient as possible. They take into account weather patterns, air traffic, and geopolitical considerations, among other factors. So, the next time you board a flight from New York to London, remember the complex planning and strategic decisions that go into charting that seemingly simple journey? It's a tale of two cities connected by a web of careful calculations and considerations. Section 7. Over the Pacific. Flights across the Pacific Ocean face similar challenges. The vast expanse of water presents unique obstacles for pilots and airlines alike. Unlike flights over land where airports are more frequent, the Pacific Ocean offers limited options for emergency landings. This makes route planning and aircraft reliability crucial for safe travel. The shortest route between Los Angeles and Tokyo, for example, would take the plane over a lot of open water. This direct path is known as the Great Circle Route, which is the shortest distance between two points on the globe. However, Flying over such a vast, uninterrupted stretch of ocean can be daunting for both passengers and crew, this could be risky in case of a problem, as there are fewer airports available for emergency landings. In the event of an emergency, pilots must be prepared to divert to the nearest suitable airport, which could be hundreds of miles away. This is why thorough pre-flight planning and constant communication with air traffic control are essential. To enhance safety, airlines often choose routes that fly closer to Alaska or the Aleutian Islands. These routes, while slightly longer, provide more opportunities for emergency landings. The Aleutian Islands in particular offer a series of airstrips that can be used in case of an emergency, making them a safer option for trans-Pacific flights. While these routes might be slightly longer, they offer more options for diversion airports. This added safety margin is a critical factor in route planning, ensuring that flights can be diverted quickly and safely if necessary. Pilots are trained to handle such diversions efficiently, minimizing risks, and ensuring passenger safety. This reduces the risk associated with flying over such a vast expanse of water. By choosing routes with more diversion options, airlines can mitigate the inherent risks of long-haul flights over the Pacific. This strategic planning is a testament to the aviation industry's commitment to safety and reliability. The development of more reliable aircraft with longer ranges has allowed airlines to utilize more direct routes over the Pacific in recent years. Modern aircraft are equipped with advanced technology that enhances safety and efficiency, making it possible to fly longer distances without compromising on safety. These advancements have revolutionized trans-Pacific travel, making it more accessible and convenient for passengers. However, safety remains paramount and flight paths are constantly evaluated to ensure they meet the highest safety standards. Airlines and regulatory bodies work together to monitor and assess flight routes, making adjustments as needed to maintain the highest levels of safety. This ongoing commitment to safety ensures that passengers can travel with confidence, 
knowing that every precaution has been taken to ensure a safe journey. Section 8. Around the World These principles apply to flights all over the world. Whether it's a short hop between cities or a long-haul journey across continents, flight paths are carefully planned to optimize efficiency, safety, and compliance with regulations. Next time you're on a flight, take a moment to look at the moving map display. You'll likely see that your plane is not flying in a perfectly straight line. Instead, it's following a complex path influenced by the curvature of the Earth, wind patterns, political boundaries, and safety considerations. Understanding these factors can give you a greater appreciation for the complexities of air travel and the careful planning that goes into every flight, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the journey knowing that you're in good hands. Section 9. Keep looking up. The next time you are tracking a flight or planning a trip, think about what you have learned. Those strange lines on the map have a purpose. They help planes fly faster, use less fuel, and keep everyone safe. Flying is a marvel of engineering and planning. It connects people and places all over our amazing planet. So keep looking up at the sky and remember that there's more to those flight paths than meets the eye. 